Hello, this is Thomas Donald Jacobs for Paperboys on Thursdays, and it is obviously not Thursday, <laughs> but uh, y'all know I'm in the last year of this dissertation. Um, I do things when I have the spoons to do them, okay? <laughs> so uh, I just thought, I was thinking about this earlier, um, and I thought that I would get on here, um, amuse myself a little, maybe amuse you, because it, it's, it's, it's a stupid thing, so I'm going to laugh at it. Um, it's this argument that uh, transphobic people and, and TERFs, <laughs> a lot of overlap between those two, um, but it's like squares and rectangles, you know. <laughs> all TERFs are transphobes, but not all transphobes are TERFs. Um, this argument that they sometimes make, and it's that, um, well, when people see your skeleton, they're going to know that you were a girl. Uh, if they're talking to someone, um, trans mask like me, and they, they think that this is like the be-all and end-all of arguments, the ones that, that express this, I don't want to call it a thought, um, that seems a little too dignified. Let's just say this, this uh, noise <laughs> that occasionally comes out of them. Um, they think this is the, the absolute end of any discussion. You can't refute my reasoning. <laughs> but... Um, from my point of view, it's more like, okay, let, let's hold up here just for a sec. Um, uh, you sound super excited about my death. I'm good for you. I'm me, not so much. But let's let's examine this. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things wrong here, so let's just go through them. Um, first, my plan is for no one. To see my skeleton uh, after my death. Um, I have, you know, occasionally thought about, you know, what my, my funerary arrangements uh, should be, which I think is uh, a responsible thing for adults to consider. Um, and I want to be cremated. Um, the only person who's going to see... Uh, my remains, my body, uh, is the dude working, hopefully, just the dude working at the crematorium. Um, and maybe, I don't, the doctor that signs my death certificate. Um, I don't like the idea of burial for several reasons, ethical and ecological, especially, you know, in an American style of funeral, the embalming. Um, it's a lot of chemicals. It's super expensive. And, you know, in my family, my experience is that this is not, it's not a celebration of your life. Okay. <laughs> it's a very pricey taxidermy for a one day display. And then, uh, you know, like a church and gravesite arrangement that is an occasion for your family to get together. And, um, you know, give full reign to their dysfunctionality. Like, I, I don't want to pay for it, and I don't see why anyone else should. <laughs> and um, I don't believe in a physical resurrection. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this meat suit that I am currently operating, um, once, I'm, once I'm gone, yeah, burn it to a crisp, grind it up, and put it in a coffee can. You know, um, I, I don't, that's not my concern. I'm not concerned with people seeing my body after I'm dead. That's not the plan. And also, even if it were, I'm not ashamed that I'm trans. If people knew that I was assigned female at birth, I have told everyone, this is on the internet. Everyone, everyone who wants to know can find out. Um, I know that that is hard for transphobic people to comprehend. Um, the idea that some transgender people genuinely have zero shame 
Um, especially after they have transitioned and been out for a while. Zero shame. No longer care. I used to, for sure. Not no more. Um, that's hard for people to comprehend. So it's not the plan, one. And two, I don't care. But moving on from there, I, I can envision a couple of scenarios where someone might be looking at my skeleton without knowing anything about me um, as an individual and how I've lived my life and expressed myself and interacted with people um, and might misgender me. Uh, won't be the first time, <laughs> you know. I, but I can see a couple of scenarios, um, but not the results that they seem to be envisaging. The, the trans people uh, would be, like, you know, somehow involved in this or concerned with what happens. Like, for example, um, say I was buried for some reason and I am dug up at some point in the future by some anthropologist who determines that I was assigned female at birth and misgenders me in a research paper. Um, well, they got it wrong. What could, I mean, <laughs> that's a problem, but it's not really my problem. <laughs> Tell me why I should be concerned about this. Um, they should have, you know done the responsible thing and gone to a fucking archive. <laughs> and, you know, if there were no archives around, well then, this is so far in the future that it's, you know, hard for me to even, like, imagine what my responsibility to this person could possibly be. Um, again, that, it's that's very much a them problem. Um, other scenarios, let's see. Uh, there was some horrific disaster or man-made tragedy, uh, where a lot of people have met their end all at once and I am among them, right? And then you have like specialists who come in and they try to sort out who is who so that people's remains can be, um, taken care of according to their wishes or the wishes of their family, um. I, am I going to, like, how am I, again, I have not made a secret of the fact that I'm trans, but, um, like, I, I don't know where, the, I don't know where this problem is that, that the transphobes imagine. They're, they'll be able to, like, find my relatives. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be, you know, the object of a huge degree of fascination under those circumstances because this is like a large tragedy, right? Not everything revolves around like my personal feelings. There's, there's going to be other things going on. Like I've, I've met one person who um, did that kind of work, like, you know, got called in on uh, like airplane crashes to like help figure out who's who. Um, he, he didn't strike me as the type of person who did that kind of work because he was like looking for trans people to publicly humiliate. I don't think that that's why people get into that kind of work. I think you have to be like a really special and particularly compassionate kind of person to do that kind of work. So I'm again at a loss as to like how this argument is an argument. Um, and then there's the last thing. And this is what it sounds like. What they're actually saying is, yeah, but what if you are uh, murdered and dumped in a ditch? And I would like to help that happen. That's actually what that shit sounds like. Like you're, you know, rooting for it or possibly planning it. I don't know. Um, it is a thing that happens. Uh, unfortunately, um, too many, even one would be too many, obviously, but too many transgender people meet their end that way, um, at the hands of violent transphobes, um, 
and then they are just dumped somewhere. You know, um, that is a thing that happens. Uh, but under those circumstances, I would, one, want to be identified as trans because hate laws, uh, you know, are a thing. And I think the maximum penalty should apply. Um, hate crimes should be punished more stringently uh, as deterrent. And... Um, Second, I'm not going to be, like, like if you're, like, worried that I won't be identified, believe me, I'll be identified, okay? People use other things um, than just taking, a, a, like, a quick glance at your skull um, or your pelvis to see, oh, was this person assigned male at birth or assigned female at birth when they're uh, doing that kind of forensic identification. Like, I will be not difficult to pick out. No one else has this combination of ugly ass teeth all right uh my fractured wrist from when i was a child my fractured leg from when i was a teenager and my hip dysplasia like there's records i'll be picked out of the pile don't worry like i appreciate your concern but um maybe you should stop to think before you say that kind of thing should i say it you always have the option of, like, keeping shit to yourself. And sometimes less is more. Um, that, it sounds, like, threatening to say that sort of thing to a transgender person, considering the number of transgender people that that happens to, and the number of transphobes who openly express their desire to see it happen. Uh, like Lily Cade, you know? She's one of y'all. Like, own that shit. Um, and stop to, to think, how does this make me sound? It makes you sound like a violent psychopath, all right? Now, there's all of that weird shit. <laughs> um, none of which I'm entirely certain, like, how much I, sh like, I, I'll be dead, all right? And even if I'm a ghost, I... I'm going to have other things to do. <laughs> That's my plan. I'm going to have other things to do than to worry about uh, people misgendering me. And if they, they do and I get upset about it as a ghost, well, fuck it. I'll just go haunt them. I mean, um, but the more interesting thing is how telling this is. This thing that they say. Because um, it really does show like how little they know about human biology when you start to actually read papers on sexing skeletons by actual forensic anthropologists um you know published peer-reviewed scientific work not just like a pile of sue grafton novels but you know real scientific work um you find out it's not that easy uh one of the more interesting studies that I've read, and there's a couple of them out there like this, but it, I don't want to use the word like taste test in this context because it sounds a little off, but it is kind of what they've, they've done in some cases. Um, taken identified sets of remains where they know that the person was presumably at least cis female or cis male, removed that information from the remains the paperwork associated with the set of remains and just given the skeletons to a forensic anthropologist and said, sex the skeleton. And then they compare the results to the records. And what they find is that in the case of like prepubescent remains, it is really hard to sex a skeleton. Um, I saw one um, figure that said that the method used, the rate of accuracy was as low as 70%. I feel like I could do about that good just by guessing. I mean, I can guess with the best of them. Let's have at it. <laughs> you have to actually use like a combination of uh, metrics and morphology. So measurements, size, and shape. Um, 
And you have to use a combination because there are no traits that are perfectly exclusive to male or female populations. Because um, biology is complicated. It's not so simple. Uh, you have to look at a combination of things. And even then, forensic anthropologists will say, sometimes we get it wrong. Because um, once again, biology, who knew it was hard? Um, that's a really interesting thing about this argument that they, that they, that they make. It really, really reflects how uninformed they are and how simplistic they think identity is. Um, and how weird the shit is that comes out of their mouths. <laughs> oh, yeah. So weird. So so very weird. Um, anyways, uh, I hope you thought that something in there was was interesting or amused you. I mean, it is, like I said, it sounds like mildly threatening when an angry transphobe like says that kind of shit to you. Um, but at the same time, I can't help but being like, Wow, I I can't I can't believe that you thought that that was like an argument. I, mean, I don't know where you were going with it, but it it didn't go where you thought it was. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's it's about as good as when you know people say things to me like, "No matter how hard you try, you'll never be a real woman," because they. We're wrong about all of the things. <laughs> it's like that. Um, yeah, I gotta, I gotta do some paperwork, so I'm gonna head. But um, I will see you. I don't know when, and I'm not making any more promises about when things happen. Shit gets done when it gets done. That's, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, but in the meantime, be good. Make good choices, keep each other safe, and um, talk to you hopefully soon. Bye.